How I stopped being gang stalked. Hey, what's up? It's Renee. Welcome to Edge of Illumination. How I stopped being gang stalked and how you can too if you have a similar experience to myself. Now, I'm a musician, I'm a sociologist, I graduated from UCLA in sociology, I also have four related degrees in behavioral science, teaching, and more. Avid researcher, I've been researching since I've been a little girl, but I've also experienced what some would call targeted harassment, and we're going to discuss that here. We're going to discuss a little bit about the differences between targeted harassment and gang stalking. I do want to make sure that you know this. This is absolutely in no way, shape, or form a substitute for qualified medical or legal advice. And I'm saying that because, you know, some people, if they're like in an extreme situation, maybe something that they feel is life-threatening, urgent, this is not a substitute for that. On this tape, I am sharing with you tools and tips and things that help me. We're also gonna cover a little bit of academic research as well in order to help you and give you some tips if you are going through this. So what is gang stalking and what are targeted individuals? Let's go to a definition for it. Targeted individuals, I'm not gonna read this whole thing, are basically individuals who believe that they are victims of constant stalking, monitoring, and harassment by shadowy adversaries, most commonly government agents. They believe in the use of physical surveillance as well as fantastic forms of electronic surveillance such as microwave technology. This is exactly why I do not put myself in that category. If you look at the list, a lot of the stuff that they're talking about, I am not claiming any of that. I think a lot of it sounds like pure psychosis, but we're gonna explain on this tape why it may or may not be possible. We're gonna look at some quantum physics. We're gonna look at a little bit of academic research. In my particular experience, I've gone through what would be called targeted harassment. Targeted harassment can, if you go down the rabbit hole, morph into something called gang stalking which we'll get into in just a minute. But this tape is more so to help you if you are going through targeted harassment and it's not under the guise of conspiracy like what we just looked at is. So let's look at what's targeted harassment. Well, the AI overview, targeted harassment is a form of harassment that involves repeated unreciprocated behavior intended to humiliate or degrade an individual or group often based on protected characteristics like gender or race and religion. We're going to look at what is targeted harassment designed to do. Now there are several quality resources on this. This is one of them here. What targeted harassment is. It is the systematic harassment which Purpose is to silence the victim. That is exactly right. We're not gonna break down every single category in this video and why someone may or may not be being harassed, but this video is more so for people who believe that they are or believe they know someone who is. We're just curious to learn more about it. Typically, vulnerable populations are going to be more at risk for targeted harassment. What is a vulnerable population? Now, when I was in college, I didn't like that term. You know, it kind of makes the group sound sort of weak. But what it actually is, is it's a real thing. It's a term for people who are marginalized, maybe because of being a minority status. Maybe they're the only woman. Maybe they're the only person of that ethnicity. Maybe they are very active and vocal with a religious organization. They could be a whistleblower. They could be, there's so many different characteristics. It crosses the boundaries of color, gender, this, that, and the other. There's all kinds of reasons why somebody might be in a vulnerable or at-risk population. Economic can be another really big reason. So let's say you're a person who has a scholarship to go to a very prestigious school, but most of the people in your class are at a much higher level financially and you're a struggling college student, this is someone that could be very vulnerable. It is no secret that vulnerable populations are more at risk for certain types of harassment. If someone is homeless, there are many reasons why people who are vulnerable populations may be at risk for darker underpinnings in society. Let's give a really great example. All you have to do is look at a survey of what type of people are likely to be 
on the streets. When I was going through a lot of harassment, which started very young, I didn't have a lot of resources. So I did a lot of studying for myself. I did a lot of research, asked a lot of questions. I question everything. I do also want to briefly address, I do not charge for healings, spiritual healings, things like that, coaching. I believe that that type of information should be free. So if you have any questions, please ask me on my website. We'll cover it in a future video or something along those lines or I'll answer it. But like, I don't do that. I think that's how we can tell the real from the artificial, in my opinion, because I don't agree with charging for information that can help tips, tools. I mean, you know, that's very debatable and there are people that would adamantly disagree and say that it's a good thing, but I I don't. Okay, so let's continue forward. If you are in a vulnerable population, it is difficult if you are going through targeted harassment. In fact, it's terrible because you may find that you are automatically discredited, that you are marginalized, that people tell you that you're wrong, they may dismiss you instantly, they won't even hear your claims in certain cases, and it actually becomes sort of a snowball effect because the more a person is targeted for harassment, the more they start going down that rabbit hole because psychological harassment does destabilize a person mentally. And it can cause things like emotional outburst, it can cause symptoms of a variety of other things, feeling uneasy, crying, all kinds of stuff. And if people see the person reacting that way and they don't know why and they don't know what's going on and they're prejudging without actually taking a step back to look at it, they may instantly put the person in a certain category, further marginalize them, and then that just increases, right? And it builds up. In some cases, I've seen women who are extremely articulate, intelligent, who are in horrible circumstances, And it seems like they keep getting further and further marginalized. This is a problem. This is actually a problem that many sociologists, social psychologists, et cetera, have been talking about for a long time. So when you're in a situation like that, having tools and knowledge can be really helpful, especially if you don't have maybe a lot of faith in local institutions or in the local resources that you've been given. The first thing that I would recommend doing if you have been a victim of targeted harassment is to ground yourself in logical research. Now, not all scholars agree. Definitely use peer-reviewed articles if you can. Use academic resources when available to you. There are some scholars you may agree with this person and you may not agree with the other person. However, there are people and systems that understand this phenomenon very well. Ground yourself in logical research. Number two, document everything that you can. A huge problem that I see certain people make is they start telling everybody, oh, check this out, look at this, watch this. If you're not sure exactly who all is involved, maybe it's a good idea to just keep the documentation and share it when you feel safe with the right people. Number three, eat healthy, eat right. I have noticed that for myself, when I eat a lot of healthy nutrients, when I make sure I'm getting all my vitamins and especially minerals, that everything works better. My brain works better, physically I feel better. Do not underestimate great rest and eating healthy. That's really important, especially if you're going through these type of manipulations or smear campaigns or something like that. It's great to be as sharp and clear-headed as possible. Number three, ground yourself in healthy spiritual practices. That is huge. That will give you mental stability, emotional, and spiritual support in my personal experience. The biggest thing of all is whatever you really enjoy, whatever you're really good at, try to do that thing all of the time. If you paint and you're a great painter, paint all of the time. If you draw, you're a good drawer, draw all of the time. Do what you love to do to the best of your ability. Now, what could be causing the phenomenon of gang stalking? We're gonna talk about gang stalking here, not targeted harassment. There are a few things. One is the Badir Meinhof phenomenon. You know that feeling when you buy a brand new car, let's say you get a little white car and all of a sudden you start seeing your car everywhere. That's because of selective attention and cognitive biases that are sort of built in where what we're putting our attention on, we focus on it and we're able to pick up on it. This is for a variety of reasons. Scholars have debated this over time. We'll get into some of the metaphysical 
reasons for this in just a moment, but when you buy something that is new, you might start noticing it everywhere, right? Because your brain is acting like a filter to a certain extent. If you're being gang stalked, the exact same thing happens. So you have to be very careful of that. So if you start noticing, oh, white cars are following me, it'll continue to unfold that white cars are following you, right? But then you get into something else called confirmation bias. And this is where it can get a little bit sticky because confirmation bias is when you see certain information that aligns with what you were thinking and what you assumed, you tend to agree with it. And you tend to say, okay, that has to be correct because I just saw it. This is another confirmation. This is another confirmation, right? But when it comes to a phenomenon such as feeling like you're being watched or being surveyed, this might not be good. If you're being targeted, it is extremely important to be able to clearly differentiate between what you know and what you're experiencing, what's real, what you can basically begin to prove and document and other types of phenomenon that could lead to you being dismissed. Super important to know. Another thing is the bandwagon effect. This is why I don't get into stuff like the Mandela effect and stuff like that. I know people that do, and I'm not saying anything is wrong with that, but the thing about the bandwagon effect, and there are also other things that can happen with a situation like that, where if you see a bunch of other people saying, oh, this is happening, this is happening, and everybody's agreeing, there is an ability for people, humans, to sort of turn off a certain part of their logical thinking and to just go along with what everybody else is doing. And this can be conscious or unconscious. This can be knowingly or unknowingly. But it can also be dangerous if what they're jumping onto isn't true. Right? So if everybody assumes that a particular group or a particular organization is up to something that they are not up to, right? If you jumped on the bandwagon and everybody's all saying it in that group, it's a lot more difficult to escape that thinking. And it's a lot easier to fall into being in alignment and agreement with something that may totally be wrong. This is extremely important. Another reason why I don't use labels such as TI and things like that. If you use that terminology alone, using that terminology makes it to where you are identifying with a group right? And when you're identifying with a group, you're less likely to disagree with that group. You're more likely to agree with that group because of something called group identity or shared identity. That's a whole long tape in itself, but the simple fact of the matter is don't be too quick to jump onto a cause if you don't know all the details yet. That's my personal advice. You don't have to take it. Other people can say, no, but this is what it is and we are going through the same thing. Okay, not everybody is. This is where it gets juicy, right? When you have things such as the laws of attraction, ancient teachings from books such as the Kybalion and the Hermetic Principles, quantum entanglement, there are research scholars who have been discussing this for a long time, such as Tom Campbell, who wrote My Big Toe. I found a lot of his information helpful over the years. You also have David Bohm, one of my favorite physicists ever. You also have Carl Jung, great psychologist, and many others who have left little breadcrumbs that, hey, what if we're all interconnected? What if it's all a simulation that is connected with us? And when you think something enough, it tends to interconnect and tie in and that thing tends to occur more often. If this is true, the last thing you probably want to be doing is focusing too much on some of the more negative aspects. At the same time, you don't want to negate it and dismiss it. So I'll tell you what I did in my case, right? I had a lot of weird stuff that was happening. I do have a file where I documented it. A lot of weird activities that could very much be described as gang stalking, etc. But what I did was I reframed it. Instead of seeing it as, oh, they're attacking me, they're doing this, they're setting me up, why'd they put those signs out there? Why are they doing, I just, wacky stuff started happening. Such <laughs> cartoonish stuff, right? That it, it's like, what, what, how is that, what are they doing? But instead of 
reacting to it, which would continue the confirmation bias, which would continue to have me filter it to where I see it more and more. And if we're adding in another layer of quantum physics and metaphysics, would help me to continue to manifest it or be connected to it. Instead, what I did was I started ignoring it. I'm not joking. As wacky and wild as some of the stuff was, I started ignoring it. I started not paying attention to it. I really got into the Bible and prayer and I noticed that it fell away. A lot of the stuff that was more aggressive and negative just started to kind of phase out and it was really helpful. Later on, I did experience some targeted harassment, but it wasn't the same as the gang stalking group efforts. If perception creates reality, probably one of the last things that you wanna do is spend too much time focusing on it. You do want to know and keep track of if weird phenomenons or odd phenomenons are happening. You may find that it may make for a great story later on, that it may help you with research down the line. It may help you help others down the line, but You don't want to create more of it, so to speak. The last thing we want to do is magnify it too much by focusing on it more than we need to be and more than we should be. But that doesn't mean negate it, neglect it, or dismiss it. 